Welcome to another episode of A Salt and Buttery with Intent to Satisfy. Anyway, today we're doing something that's a very, very seasonal thing. Okay, um, I was lucky enough, I went to the farmer's market and I was able to find some squash blossoms for sale. Now, most people don't sell the squash blossoms because they let the squash blossoms grow into zucchini or yellow squash or something like that and then sell sell that at the farmer's market instead. So, what the first thing that we have to do is, is rinse these in cold, cold water, as cold as you can get, okay? Because otherwise they end up getting limp. So that also serves to get the bugs off of them because squash blossoms have a tendency to, like any other flower, have a tendency to have some bugs in them. And you don't want squash blossoms that have been treated with a lot of insecticides because that will change the flavor and could possibly make you sick depending on how sensitive you are to those. Anyway, so first thing to do, rinse in as cold water as you can get, okay? Then once you've rinsed them, you want to gently, gently pat them dry with a paper towel over the top. Okay, you have to do it gently, otherwise you will end up squishing the squash blossoms. Okay, now after you've done that, then we can let these dry for a little bit more. Okay, go ahead and leave the paper towel on top of it. We're going to start making the filling. Now for the filling, we have cream cheese or chevre cheese. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's still a cream cheese consistency. Now what we're adding is some Romano or Parmesan. Okay. Um, if you're adding Romano, you're going to want to use half the amount. Otherwise, it tends to uh, be stronger. Romano cheese is stronger in flavor and scent than, um, than Parmesan cheese. Parmesan is actually, for a hard cheese, is pretty mild in flavor. And you want to mix that together really good. And it's okay if you've got a few little lumps or whatever, but you want to try to get it distributed as much as possible. Now, you want to make sure also that the uh, cream cheese or other cheese that you use is room temperature so that it mixes easily so you're not fighting with this brick. Now, a little bit of milk and a little bit of green chili. Now you can use uh, jalapeno, you can use canned chili. If you use canned chili, it tends to be milder in flavor. Jalapeno tends to be a little bit spicier than the, than the canned green chilies, okay? Um, but they also don't carry the excess water from the canning process. Now. As you can see, this has a little bit of soupiness to it, which is going to make it easier for putting it into the squash blossoms. They're not very large, so we only need a tiny bit for each one, okay? And if you happen to have your own vegetable garden and you're growing your own um, zucchini and stuff like that, you know how you always end up with more zucchini than what you can use? Well, this is a way to cut down on a little bit and have a very seasonal treat. Now, after you've mixed this all up, what you're going to want to do is bring over your squash blossoms. Okay, pull the paper towels off. Make sure no bugs are crawling. Okay, if they are, squish them, rinse, pat dry again. Okay. Now, very, very carefully, what we're going to want to do is fill the flower blossoms. Okay, hold on just a second. So you're going to take the flower, okay, and very carefully pull it open a little bit. Okay, because you have to have an opening to be able to put the cheese filling into. So very carefully. 
Now, as you can see inside, there is the um, the stem stamen of the flower. Okay. Now you can either pull that out to give yourself some more room, or you can leave it. It does not matter. Okay. And technically speaking, this would count as a stem, so I would trim that off. But that's not necessary. These are small enough, they'll cook very, very quickly. So I'll have a little bit of added veggies along with my cheese and my flour. Like I said, this is a very, very seasonal thing. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I just have not been able to get the squash blossoms to do it. So we take some of the cheese filling and basically kind of like gently cram it in there, okay? You want to do it kind of gently because you don't want the flour to just fall apart. And your fingers will probably get messy with this. That is okay. But as you can see, I'm getting some of the cheese mixture in there. Okay. Like I said, a little messy, but that's okay. Hands wash, and the whole idea is to basically fill up this blossom part with the cheese. Now, as you get each one done, just set, set it to the side. Okay, this one's done set to the side. Then we go on to the next one. So I'm going to finish filling these, then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, now that we have carefully stuffed the blossoms with the cheese, it's okay if it's a little bit messy. Now what we want to do is lightly roll them in the flour. Okay, and we're going to shake off the excess flour. Just tap, 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 tap. See? That just gets a little bit of flour on it, okay, all over, helps. So then after we've done that, we set them down and then we'll go on to the next step. So let me get these all coated and then we'll go on, then I'll show you what happens next. Okay, now we have some oil, like canola oil, which will not smoke at a higher temperature. You can use canola oil or peanut oil. You need an oil that's not going to smoke at a higher temperature because it turns out if they do, then they turn nasty and carcinogenic. So you want oil that's not going to smoke, okay? Now, I have here two eggs beaten with some water, okay? Which helps make it a little bit runnier. Now, very carefully, I'm going to take each blossom, dip it in the egg, okay, because we want to get it covered with that, and the flour helps it stick. Then very carefully, we place it into the hot oil. Now, you're going to watch this, because this happens pretty quick if the oil is hot enough, okay. We're going to take this to a nice light golden brown. We're going to have to turn it, but it also allows us to keep an eye on it. Okay. I'm just doing one now to show you how it looks. And it only takes about, depending on how hot your oil is, only takes about two minutes, two to four minutes. So almost perfect. And you only need about a quarter inch of oil, okay? So, see, we're getting that nice golden brown color, okay? Almost finished. Oh yes, there we go. That's what I was looking for, okay? Now, pull it out. Carefully set it on a paper towel to drain. Now you can get away with doing, because of how quickly they cook, you can get away with doing two to four of these at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these up. Okay, then we'll come back at the end and show you what it looks like. Thanks.
Okay, as you can see here, I have the last two that I'm pulling out. And these look perfect. Lightly golden brown, ready to go. Okay, not burned because this is a flower. It is rather delicate, so you have to, so you have to be careful with it, okay? We don't want to overcook it because then you lose the whole thing. And we don't want to undercook it because then ugh. anyway. So, like I said, depending on how hot your oil is, 2 to 4 minutes total for each flower, okay? So this cooks up pretty quick. Works great as an appetizer, very seasonal treat. Have some fun with this. Modify it so it fits you. Make it awesome. Let me know what you think. Thank you. Once again, this was A Salt and Buttery with Intent to Satisfy. Thank you.